Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I'm going to show you how to make meatloaf. We're going to make it very very delicious but so much it's exactly like my mother's. The only difference is we're using ground turkey instead of regular meatloaf mix which is ground beef, veal and pork. Okay over the ingredients so we can get started. You're going to need some ground turkey, some plain breadcrumbs, one small onion finely chopped, two cloves of garlic, minced, fresh flat leaf parsley chopped, raw egg and for the filling, salami, hard boiled eggs, sharp provolone, parmigiana reggiano and you're of course going to need a little olive oil, salt and pepper. Very very easy ingredients and this is going to be absolutely delicious. Like I said it's exactly like my mother's, the only difference is I'm using ground turkey instead of you know pork, veal and beef which is your traditional um, meatloaf mix. I'm you know it's Anytime I'm using, a re every time I'm making a recipe for ground beef, you know, meatloaf, meatballs, I try to sneak in some ground turkey in there just because it's leaner and if I can disguise it so that nobody will figure out what it is, then I do it. And this is one of those recipes. It's so, so, so good, you'll never know. It's not, you know, ground beef, pork and veal. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take my one small onion that I finally diced. I have two cloves of garlic that I've minced. I'm just going to cook these up in about a tablespoon of olive oil until they're like soft and translucent, about five, six minutes, and then I'm going to let them cool for five minutes. I got my onion and garlic mixture cooling, and what happens, I'm going to chop up my Genoa salami. And now, traditionally, in Italian, whenever we make an Italian meatloaf called porpettone, um, it's stuffed with like salami, provolone, and hard boiled eggs. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just taking four ounces of salami and I'm just chopping it so it's nice and fine. I mean, not too fine. That's perfect because you want to be able to, you know, bite down on it. And as you know, whenever making meatloaf or meatballs or anything like that, you don't really want to work the meat too much, otherwise it becomes tough. So I'm going to do all my mixture. Whoops! At the bottom of the bowl, mix everything together, and then at the last minute, put in the ground turkey. This is my salami. I'm just breaking it up with my fingers a little bit. This is all sticky together. Once that's done, I'm going to... What am I going to do next? Let me continue to work on the filling. Okay, we have that. We have our cooked um, onions and garlic. And this is going to add a lot of moisture to it and we want that especially because well, we're using ground turkey and as we all know it can be a little dry. One egg. I can run in there, broke my own rule there and didn't break it into a separate bowl, which you always should. Some fresh chopped parsley, about three tablespoons, three, three, two to three tablespoons, as much as you like. Season this with salt and pepper. We want to make sure to season every element of the dish. But don't go too crazy on the salt because the provolone is very salty, very salty. And so is the parmigiano de Giano, which we're going to put in about a quarter cup or so. Three tablespoons to a quarter cup. That's almost perfect. Great. That done. I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Again, it really keeps things moist. And let me just work this together. That's perfect. Put in a little bit of breadcrumbs. You really don't need a whole lot. About a quarter cup. As you can see, I haven't put my hands in there yet. I'm gonna wait out till I wanna wait till we put in the turkey for that. So set this aside. Because now we're gonna chop up our provolone. Okay, I'm just gonna take off the very top, the rind. And per, this this sharp provolone is very sharp, so you really don't need a whole lot. And just cut it in little pieces, little bite-sized pieces like that. Got my provolone over there. Now I forgot a very crucial ingredient. Oh, my mother would be freaking out right now if you saw this. You need a little milk. That's always her secret when she makes meatballs or meatloaf, whatever. I don't know why. She, she just says it makes, keeps everything really, really moist and tender. So we're going to put in a couple tablespoons of milk. I use whole milk. You can use whatever you have on hand. All right. We got that done. We got provolone chopped, hard boiled eggs on hand. I have a baking, I have a cookie sheet here, baking sheet, whatever you call it. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on there so that doesn't stick. Now we're going to add in our ground turkey. We're going to work this as little as possible. Before I put my hands in there, I want to season the turkey with a little salt and pepper. 
Remember, we have a lot of salty Parmigiano Reggiano in there and provolone, so be careful. Don't go too nuts. All right. Cook's best tools. Go in there with your hands and mix the whole thing together. Okay, my mixture's all mixed. I'm just going to put it on this baking sheet. Now, we are going to flatten this out, okay? Flatten it out as much as possible. Get rid of any air bubbles. Otherwise, you'll get a slice of meatloaf that's like hollow, which don't want. All right, flatten it out. Get rid of any bubbles. Perfect. Now we're going to stuff it right down the middle. We're going to take half of a provolone, which I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's so, so strong. You're really overpowered the whole thing if you put too much. We're going to take hard boiled eggs and everything stuffed in Italian household. Anytime you're making, I don't know, baked CD or anything like that, we always put hard boiled eggs. Put the rest of the provolone around it like that. And now just with your hands, putting this closer to me, with my hands, I'm just going to work this together to bury the eggs and the provolone. Perfect. Look at that. Thing of beauty. Okay. Oh, forgot to mention, preheat your oven to 350 degrees, so it's waiting for you. And this puppy is going to go in there for about 45 to 55 minutes, by which it should be perfect by then. All right, in she goes, 45 minutes, and 45 minutes, it's probably ready. So, in she goes. My meatloaf is done. It's been cooking for 45 minutes, and you can see it cracked a little bit at the top. But that's perfectly fine. That just means that I didn't do such a good job at sealing, you know, the top. But, either way, it's delicious. Now, I let this cool for a couple minutes. I'm just going to actually use my parchment paper as a guide to transfer this onto my platter. There we go. Smells so good. Smells just like my mother's meatloaf. That provolone is strong, but I'm telling you, makes this out of this world. Okay, slice it up so I can give it a bite. I love the ends. I love the crispy ends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You can see... You can see the parsley, you can see the onions, you have a little bit of the egg, the cheese is melted all around the egg, the salami. When you try this recipe, you're gonna go nuts. No more boring, dried out meatloaf. Mm -mm. Wow. Mm. So good, so, so, so good. Now in Italy, we don't eat meatloaf for the gravy. We eat it with like bread sauce or plain as is, which I prefer. Um, if you want to make a quick, a quick little gravy to put over the top, go right ahead. But I suggest serving it just like this or with a little marinara sauce. Perfect. Leftovers, best meatloaf sandwiches you've ever had. Wow. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed spending time with me. So get this recipe and other recipes. Check out my website, www.lauraneekitchen.com. I'll see you next time. Bye.